Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And a very warm welcome to Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily. On today's show, we take a heartfelt look back at Superman the movie. Nah, nah, don't go anywhere. This is not going to be boring. This is going to be very, very differently done. Because I'm going to look at the culture and environment and era and mentality that this film was made in and viewed in. And we're also going to discuss the era and mentality where Man of Steel was made in. Because I want to make a very serious point in who and what we've become as humanity, looking at Superman the movie and Man of Steel, and if we really are at a good place. Are we very well? Are the people making entertainment very well? I think you know the answer to that question. Superman the movie wasn't the first Superman movie ever made. Superman and the Mole Man was. There was another one starring Kirk Allen. These were little short movies in cinemas prior to the main event. Superman, Superman and the Mole Man was the first time George Reeves played Superman. People loved it so much. It was part of creating something groundbreaking for a groundbreaking piece of technology, television. And that was a great start for Superman. I will hear no different at the time. The Adventures of Superman starring George Reeves was absolutely groundbreaking. But Superman the movie is the first bona fide, you know, attempt to make a DC blockbuster movie. It is the first proper DC movie. And outrageously, their first attempt is one of their best attempts. Let's talk about the kind of world that Superman the movie was made for. Let's look at what type of film this is. Now, I was five years old when this film was released, but I can remember the excitement, the buzz. There was a Superman movie starring Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman. Nobody knew who Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder was, but they were the biggest movie stars on the planet. Movie stars back then didn't decide to be in stuff like this, but they were offered a hell of a lot of money to do it. And they weren't pretending they always wanted to play those characters or be in a Superman or a superhero movie. There was no superhero movies prior to that. Basically, Superman the movie was the first thing of its time. So that was a springboard to bring interest to the movie. Because before that, people just saw Superman as a cartoon character or a comic book character. What Superman the movie does is get people from different, you know, aspects of society to take Superman and superheroes seriously. It's the reason that lots of people love superheroes today. It's the reason why many of the best filmmakers are making films today, like Mr. Christopher Nolan, and before Brian Singer destroyed his entire career, Brian Singer was absolutely obsessed with Superman the movie. It's the one thing that motivated him to do his two, well, more than two, X-Men movies. But the first two were his best attempts. Singer's X-Men and X2 are two of the best comic book movies ever made. And they surpass anything in the MCU. And um, I'll fight at the mat. Let's go. Let's go. I'll fight at the mat over this. What does Superman the movie tell you about the society it was made for? Superman the movie is such a romantic movie. Not just in, in the essence of the relationship between Clark, Superman and Lois. But it's a romantic view of the world. Unlike Zack Snyder, Richard Donner didn't want to put Superman in the real world. Man of Steel puts Superman in a contemporary bleak world. Superman wasn't created to be put in a contemporary real world. But creatives today want to put 
every iconic character in the real world. And some characters just don't belong there. That's why when you create a character like Sam Beckett, you pretty much see him most of the time in the past, in his existence, because he's a, he's a gentleman and he doesn't belong in the present day. That's probably why he created the time machine. He probably didn't feel like he belonged. There's a part of Sam who likes what he's doing. But we're here to talk about Superman the movie. I'm just giving you a finite example of characters that don't belong in their contemporary world. Now, 25 to 50 people view these videos. Some just click on and click off again. I understand that. That's totally fine. I'm a boring bastard. I get it. Some people stay for the entire video. Thank you. And some of you try and keep awake and stay for most of the video. But I would think that 90% of you are geeks and nerds to escape. And the last thing you want is to be put in the real world. You are within this shit world. You live in this shit world. Why would you want to pay? for a popcorn bucket and a movie ticket just to see how shit our world is. Now, I love Man of Steel. I say that for the pie eaters who are obviously and understandably going to get upset. Man of Steel puts Superman in a bleak contemporary world. I don't want to see Superman in a bleak contemporary world. Mr. Zack Snyder, the director of Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and the ultra fantastic, the Snyder Cuts, had a convention, which they called SnyderCon. He said, wake the fuck up to all the haters of his movies. I put Superman and Batman in the real world. And that, Mr. Snyder, was your first big mistake. Now, you can do this with a lot of characters. You can do this with fictional characters you created. You can do this with Rebel Moon, your take on a darker Star Wars universe. That's absolutely okay. Some films can be absolutely contemporary. Born on the 4th of July is about a young man who's manipulated to go to Vietnam, who believes in God and country and comes back crippled, lo losing his legs and realizing the reality of the world that we live in. And it's not black and white and that's fine. But Superman wasn't created for this purpose. Superman and Luke Skywalker and characters like this were created for wish fulfillment. So when Ryan Johnson did what he did with Luke Skywalker, he brought him into a contemporary world. Because in a real world, yes, Luke Skywalker would grow old and be bitter and twisted. It's an accurate, realistic take on what Luke Skywalker would become. But nobody wanted to freaking see that, Mr. Johnson, with all due respect. That's the problem with the Rain Man attitude, and I'll, be, I'll politely call that, of the modern day creative. They're too literal minded. They don't believe in fantasy and escapism. They only care about their own commentary and worldview, and they want to force it on everyone else, and they want to force us in this contemporary world, which is bleak. Let me tell you something. I hate the world. I live it. I've created, in a way, my own world, where I can live within my mind and my fantasy. I'm not like you and most of you. I don't, I haven't mentally matured since probably I was 25 years old. I still watch cartoons. I still watch films. I believe in a certain world. When I go on Twitter and I see some of the goddamn awful takes of this contemporary society, it wounds me, breaks my heart. I have to take 50 deep breaths before I respond to anyone. That's why most of the time my responses are in laughing MOJs, because if they weren't, I would have been banned by now. They call a gentleman a beg. They think if you're complimenting a woman or buying a lady flowers or standing up when she walks into the room, if you're being a gentleman, if you hold a door open for, for them, that you're trying to get them into bed. Well, there was a time, the time that Superman the movie was made for, 
that actually that was the norm. And I wish we could return to that time. Now, some women will be absolutely offended by what I'm saying here. And some women tell me all the time, I wish I was treated like a lady. Because I do see women as the fairer sex, that women should be treated with, yes, delicately. Now, this will offend some women. Why are you saying I'm not as capable as you? That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, in the old days, people just used to respect women. Men respected women. And that's why they stood up when you walked into the room, pretty much making you feel like fucking royalty. Now, the blokes you associate with now, you love them because you think they're real. They treat you like shit. They cheat on you and they grunt at you. They give you a few pumps, explode, and then they lose interest in you. Is that better than a gentleman? But you don't want a good guy. Because at the end of the day, if someone treats you like Superman treats Lois Lane in Superman the movie, you're going to call him a beg. You're going to be cynical. And Superman the movie was made, I think, in a better time of society, a more innocent time of society, where a man could buy a woman flowers, where a man could pull, you know, a chair for a lady before she sits down, stand up when she walks into the room. Superman the movie does romance the old fashioned way. And the most beautiful moment in the film is when Lois Lane is taken on a flight of fantasy by Superman. And she does that whole, can you read my mind thing? And people make fun of it. Snyderverse stands make fun of it. Because they come from a miserable, bleak, contemporary, cynical world. Excuse me. <clears throat> Always happens every video, doesn't it? And I hate getting a croaky throat while I'm full swing. I do apologise. Anyway, so she's on this flight of fantasy the most romantic night of her life and she when she comes out of that she's just so bewildered and happy she was treated like a lady while she's flying in the air with superman she says you can fly you belong in the sky she has never met anyone like this before but he treats her like a lady he calls her miss lane when they're being interviewed. Now let's fly over to Man of Steel and look at Snyder's, um, Goya's and Nolan's idea of romance. And their idea of romance is the first flight thing between Superman and Lois being in a military compound while Clark or Superman has got handcuffs on. That's their idea of romance. Their first kiss is the most uncomfortable screen kiss I have ever seen in the history of telling stories. And again, you're thinking this guy claims he likes Man of Steel. Yes, I love Man of Steel. But Man of Steel puts Superman in a contemporary world. And as I've already said, he doesn't belong in a contemporary world. Luke Skywalker doesn't belong as a bitter old man in a contemporary world. He needs to be someone who's enlightened the society he has grown old in. When The Last Jedi happened, we should have seen him training younglings, right? And teaching everyone a better, more peaceful way, like Obi-Wan Kenobi taught him. And remembering that hatred and bitterness was the reason Anakin Skywalker was manipulated into becoming Darth Vader. There's an element of positivity there. But the modern day creative doesn't have that nuance in their creativity. Superman the movie, as I say, is a romantic movie. Now, a romance is offensive to people and the extreme left who have hijacked this industry. You can't really catalogue a straight relationship between a man and a woman. But you know what? I would take a same gender relationship made on the premise in the same way that Dick Donner and Tom Mankiewicz did the romance between Superman and Lois in Superman the movie. Because it doesn't matter who you put in that position. One of them can be the romantic hero and one of them can be wild. So whether it's two men and two women, it's going to work. But they believe that the old fashioned style of romance is offensive. And that's the kind of world 
um, we live in today. This is the kind of people we have become, where people are saying with a straight face, I don't know why people are upset if Superman kills. Are you freaking kidding me? The reason, the reason that people got upset about Superman breaking Zod's neck is something that some of you people who say, I only liked Superman once I saw Man of Steel. And as I keep on saying, that tells a story of its own. It doesn't mean you're a lesser Superman fan than me or others who loved him prior to Man of Steel. It just means you're not really getting it. And to tell me I shouldn't be upset because Superman breaks somebody's neck just pretty much tells me about your mentality. It's not your fault, it's the environment and culture that you were born in. I was first introduced to Superman via Superman the movie, a romantic, gentle movie, uh, a gentle kind of tale about who Superman is. Superman the movie puts Superman in a world where people want, are crying out for a better example. Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman puts Superman in a contemporary world that rejects him. Now, David Goyer's standpoint and criticism of the Christopher Reeves Superman film and films is that in the real world, people wouldn't be waving and clapping Superman. They'd reject him and be afraid of him. You are right, David. You are absolutely right. That is absolutely correct. But I don't want to see that. I don't want to see people rejecting Superman. It's bad enough seeing it on social freaking media, let alone in a movie. I don't care what would happen in a real world. Most of the general audience don't care what will happen in the real world. And this is the mistake they made because they didn't even, you know, they didn't even take such a deep dive with their Batman Dark Knight trilogy. So why take it with Superman? Because they don't really care about Superman. So it was worth the risk, right, to do their, you know, imprint their world views onto a contemporary Superman character in a contemporary world. A miserable, bleak world. And as I say, Superman wasn't created to be put into this bleak world. And this is where we are today. The reason people who grew up with Superman the movie look back at it with such nostalgia because it was a better world. It was a more innocent world. A world where romance was possible. That a boy and a girl, or anyone by the way, it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight or however you uh, represent yourself, this can happen to you. You could meet someone quite pure and wonderful and you could have a beautiful romance. Falling in love with a brilliant person is a fantasy that's been in, you know, in our mindsets all of our lives. But now we're told that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for a man to be a gentleman. It's not a good thing for a man to buy a woman flowers or hold a door open for her. And this is the world where we saw Superman the movie. Ultimately, Clark and Superman are old fashioned gentlemen. I'm talking about them as two different people. They're the same person but he's a gentleman. And as far as I'm concerned, he knows how to treat a lady. And his motivations are never to bed Lois Lane in that movie. Because Superman is the story of an illegal immigrant. Let's be clear here. An illegal immigrant who's raised by a traditional Midwestern American family on, you know, traditional old fashioned American ideals. He grows up, he, he keeps those ideals, probably chucks out some of the ones that he feels are problematic, and then brings his ideals and his father jor ideals to the plate as well. And he becomes his own person. And with all that power, he decides to use it for good. This is a great story. This is part of the American dream. That's what Superman you know, was created on the foundations of the Amer of the American dream, where an immigrant or an illegal immigrant can come to America and make something of themselves, but also do something for the world that's inherited them, that's invited them in and said, you are welcome here. 
and give something back to them. That's who Superman is inherently. That's not who Superman is in the Snyderverse. If you ask me who and what Superman is in the Snyderverse, I simply don't know. The films look great. There's a lot of crash, bang, wallop. But what are Superman's ideals? In Superman the movie, we know exactly what Superman's ideals are. But the truth is, the difference between Superman the movie and Man of Steel actually opens up a kind of Pandora's box and tells you the issues with modern day creatives, modern day Hollywood. As I say, Man of Steel puts Superman in the bleak real world. I don't want you to tell me that the world that I live in is shit. I already know that. That's why I watch films, great movies from the era, the best era of entertainment when I grew up in. That's why I still watch Looney Tunes and I watch The Simpsons because that's my safe space and animation is my safe space and great movies and TV shows of the past are my safe space because I crave an escape from the real world. But there's some people who believe that fantasy and escapism is unhealthy. No, what well, I'll tell you what's unhealthy, mentally damaging, is being within the real world all day. Being on social media all day, listening to people talking about their worldviews and their politics and why they hate this one and why they hate that one. And there's, there's a moment where you need an escape. Well, most of you today choose not to escape when people are complimenting modern day movies isn't it great that commentary and that it's spaced in the real world actually that's not great that's utterly damaging but we have a film industry and an entertainment industry today in general tv and film that doesn't have any variety i think it's great to make contemporary real world movies but you need the escapism movies as well but unfortunately, we live in a world where it's either one or the other. We live in a world where people are boring on social media that either superhero movies should be dark and bleak or they should be colourful and bright and motivational. When you can have lots of different types of superhero movies and movies in general. But really, what Man of Steel actually shows us in kind of comparison to Superman the movie is the time we live in today. Because even the people who set the rules and constraints in what we live in today, that we can't be gentlemen, that we can't, be, you know, we can't romance a woman or give her a compliment without her thinking we're trying to get her into bed, right? Even those people are as miserable as the rest of us who think we live in an apocalypse because we can remember a more innocent time they're more miserable than we are because they will never be satisfied. They're always going to be offended about something. They're going to be reading every letter of what you say and listen to every decibel and syllable of what you say just to find something to be offended by because everyone has to be held to account. Well, everyone but them. That's not the world I want to live in. I want to live in a world where we can be romantic, where I don't sit on a train and worry about being arrested just in case I've looked at a female opposite me for about five seconds and thought in my head, you're a bit of all right. I don't want to be arrested for that because I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. This is the society. This is the apocalyptic society we are in and it's heartbreaking and it's horrible. But I accept that we live in a different world. Like when I was a kid, I thought I lived in a great world and my dad thought, shit, this is shit. And I hate this world. You know, he grew up in the 60s, different world. And I was blaring out Rick Astley and Kylie and Jason. You can understand how disgusted, you know, the guy would have been by that. So it's like the brilliant Mike and the Mechanic song says, every generation blames the one before. I don't want to blame this generation. I want to say that this society has devolved, it's become cynical. And that's why they keep on talking about Superman being too nice and, you know, too powerful and all this nonsense. But the reason the Snyder Superman didn't work for a contemporary general audience 
is because Superman doesn't belong in a contemporary world. As I say, that's not why he was created. They tried to make a Robin Hood movie a few years back in a contemporary world. It didn't work. Even the casting was absolutely terrible. Great actor, terrible casting. That's not who Robin Hood is. Robin Hood is when he's played by Kevin Costner. And, you know, Kevin Costner does, doesn't drop his American accent, but he tries. But that's not what it's about. It's a beautifully romantic movie because Robin Hood is a romantic character. Superman is a romantic character. But unfortunately, filmmakers today have lost their soul. They can create great, beautiful computer generated images with their VFX and cinematography. But they still don't believe in fantasy. Imagine you've got the tool to take me to another world, but you refuse to. Man of Steel has the VFX and cinematography light years ahead of anything even being made today. And it decided to put Superman in a bleak, miserable world and have Park Kent say, maybe when young Clark says, what, should, what did you expect me to do, let them die? Maybe. I understand the point. But it's a point that never meet, needs to be made like that. There were other ways Pa Ken could have made the point that he's the father and he's trying to protect his son and his son is his priority. And that's not the way to do it. But this is what Goya was attempting to do. Like every new upstart in a modern generation, he feels his way is the right way. And that old guy Richard Donner did it bad, making it campy. No. Superman is campy, right? Superman is wish fulfillment. And wish fulfillment storytelling is so important. And once we lose that, we lose the element to escape. But it also, we lose the element of saying that we can create a world where humanity has the potential to become better. And great movies, great stories, great books, great comics inspire people to become better. It's like the man who wrote The Science of Superman. He read and watched Superman as a kid and saw The Science of Superman and wanted to become a scientist. Great creations and wish fulfillment inspire us all. Inspired me to want to be an actor, a writer and a director. Without the films I grew up with, without the entertainment I grew up with, I wouldn't have wanted that. I wouldn't have been doing what I do today and making these videos. You probably say, damn, I wish you never watched no telly or cinema. Hey, my apologies, hey, I'm here and I ain't going anywhere. So I believe we have lost something in the, ter in the terms of telling story. But when I see movie Twitter and the shit that they say and the stuff that they talk about, oh my God, this film doesn't have enough inclusion. Oh my God, someone's just been nominated for an Oscar, but they don't mention their talent, their ability, them deserving to be there because of what they've done within their abilities and art. They talk about the colour of their skin and how great it's been because they're the first this and they're the first that. That's what our society has lost and it's sad. And every time I say, oh, the first person who's in that group has been nominated for an Oscar instead of saying, oh my God, that brilliant actor female, male, or whatever, right, is the first person from that time. No. How about telling me why they've been nominated, what they did for you as a consumer? That's what we've lost. The wonder and the escapism. We have become inherently political. And Superman the movie took that out of the equation and said, this is a fantasy story. We're not going to put this character in the real world. This character doesn't belong in a real world. When Superman's flying to stop Lex Luthor and all the women are waving and saying, hey, it's Superman. That's the world I want to live in. When people see Superman, I want them to feel like I do. Because when I see Superman in that blue and red suit, I feel like everything's going to be all right. Even though I still have to switch that film off eventually. And I have to go back to the real world and I have to pay my bills and I have to make sure that I'm going to be okay. And there's anxiety for me like everybody else within that but while that film's on while that tv shows on there's that escapism because i feel every great story that i'm immersed in and it becomes part of me and it motivates me for me it's not a game 
for me it's not about dividing people and you know trying to upset people that's not what entertainment should be but unfortunately that's what entertainment has become there's people who have made Velma one of the most viewed thing on HBO Max history just to hate watch it you gave them what they wanted they wanted to upset you they wanted you to hate watch it but you're going to make money from hate watching it you know because you're going to be talk a bit talking about it on your YouTube channel so you did it and that is the type of society we live in today and it isn't the type of society that I want to be a part of. The society I want to be part of is a show about a talking car. Um, a show about a bunch of mercenaries who are accused of a crime they didn't commit and go around Los Angeles and America helping people for a price. Or a character called David Banner who becomes the Hulk and travels from place to place looking for a cure but while he's doing that he's he's helping people. He's being like the old-fashioned type of mercenaries. Richard Kimball, the fugitive in the television show, trying to find a one-armed man, but helping people from week to week. I want that kind of storytelling and that simple entertainment. The entertainment I was immersed in as a young man was very basic and very simple, but it did the trick. And it wasn't about upsetting everyone now this is the difference between superman the movie and man of steel and to a greater extent bvs superman the movie unites people man of steel and batman versus superman divides people that's where we are today make no mistake they are making movies as hot takes chris chibnall created a hot take within the timeless child in Doctor Who. This is where we are today. And I won't consume your shit anymore. I'll consume stuff that gives me an escape, that unites people, not divides people. This has been Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye, au revoir, auf Wiedersehen.